This is Eva Longoria sewing while reading the complete unabridged Wikipedia entry on sewing. Click through the video below for selected sections. Enjoy! Sewing, not to be confused with sewing, is the craft of fascinating or attaching objects using stitches made with a needle and thread. And sewing is one of the oldest of the textile arts, arising from the Paleolithic era. Paleolithic era. Before the invention of spinning yarn or weaving fabric, archaeologists believe Stone Age people across Europe and Asia sewed fur and skin clothing using bone or antler or, or ivory needles and thread made of various animal parts. Yeah, including veins. That's gross. So for thousands of years, all sewing was done by hand. And the invention of the sewing machine in the 19th century and the rise of computerization in the 20th century led to mass production and export of sewn objects. But hand sewing is still practiced around the world. Fine hand sewing is a characteristic of high quality tailoring, hot couture fashion, and custom dressmaking. And both is pursued by textile artist and hobbyist as a means of creative expression. The first known use of the word sewing was in the 14th century. History, origins. All right. Sewing has an ancient history estimated to begin during the Paleolithic age. Sewing was used to stitch together animal hides for clothing and for shelter. The Inuit, for example, used sinew from caribou for thread and needles made of the bone. And the indigenous peoples of the American Plains and Canadian prairies use sophisticated sewing methods, like teepee shelters. Teepees, teepees were sewed. Did you know that, guys? Teepees were sewed. Sewing was combined with the weaving of plant leaves in Africa to create baskets, such as those made by Zulu weavers, who use thin strips of palm leaf as thread to stitch wider strips of palm leaf that had been woven into a coil. The weaving of cloth from natural fibers originated in the Middle East around 4000 BC and perhaps earlier during the Neolithic age and the sewing of cloth accompanied this development. Wow, God, I am learning so much. During the Middle Ages, Europeans who could afford it employed seamstresses and tailors. And sewing, for the most part, was a woman's occupation. And most sewing before the 19th century was practical. Clothing was an expensive investment for most people, and women had an important role in extending the longevity of items of clothing. Sewing was used for mending. Clothing that was faded would be turned inside out so it could continue to be worn. Wow, imagine if we did that today. Sometimes clothing had to be taken apart and reassembled in order to suit this purpose. But once the clothing became worn or torn, it would be taken apart and the reusable cloth sewn together into new items of clothing, making it into quilts or other practical uses. The many steps involved in making clothing from scratch, weaving, pattern making, cutting, alterations, and so forth, meant that women often bartered their expertise in a particular skill with one another. <laughs> yeah, they were fancy. I bet you embroiderers made more. That's hard. Decorative needlework, such as embroidery, was a valued skill. And young women with the time and means, right, like, like what were they doing back then other than embroidering, would practice to build their skill in this area. From the Middle Ages to the 17th century, sewing tools such as needles, pins, pin cushions were included in the trousseaux of many European brides. Decorative embroidery was valued in many cultures worldwide. Although most embroidery stitches in the Western repertoire were traditionally British, Irish, or Western European in origin. Huh. Stitches originating in different cultures are known throughout the world today. Some examples are the Cretan open filling stitch, Romanian couching, Oriental couching, and the Japanese stitch. The stitches associated with embroidery spread by the way of the trade routes that were active during the Middle Ages. 
the Silk Road brought Chinese embroidery techniques to Western Asia and Eastern Europe, while techniques originating in the Middle East spread to Southern and Western Europe through Morocco and Spain. Mm, I was wondering where silk came, when did silk come into the picture, so I'm glad they mentioned that. Silk was also a text, a very important textile. Okay. European imperial settlements also spread embroidery. Oh my god, I hope it's like a, a bad STD. They spread embroidery across Europe and sewing techniques worldwide. However, there are instances of sewing techniques indigenous to cultures in distant locations from one another where cross-cultural communication would have been historically unlikely. Is, is, this, is it like ancient aliens? They can't explain it? How did they learn from each other? It's the aliens. For an example, a method of reverse applique known to the areas of South America is also known to Southeast Asia. Industrial Revolution is next. Industrial Revolution shifted the production of the textiles from the household to the mills. In the early decades of the Industrial Revolution, the machinery produced whole cloth. The world's first sewing machine was patented in 1790 by Thomas Saint. Well, then why is it called Singer? Everybody knows what a singer is. Nobody knows who Thomas Saint is. Okay. By the early 1840s, other early sewing machines machines began to appear. Bartholomew, the Mernier, introduced a simple sewing machine in 1841 to produce military uniforms for France's army. Shortly afterwards, a mob of tailors broke into Thimornier's shop and threw the machines out the windows, believing the machines would put them out of work. By the 1850s, Isaac Singer developed the first sewing machines that could operate quickly and accurately and surpass the productivity of a seamstress or a tailor by sewing. So who sewed by hand? Well, there is, there is something special though about something being handmade. While much clothing was still produced at home by female members of the family, more and more ready-made clothes for the middle classes were being produced with sewing machines. Textile sweatshops full of poorly paid sewing machine operators grew into an entire business districts in large cities like London and New York. To further support the industry, piecework was done for little money by women living in slums. Needlework was one of the few occupations considered acceptable for women, but it did not pay a living wage. Women doing piecework from home often worked 14 hour days to earn enough to support themselves, sometimes by renting sewing machines that they could not afford to buy. All right, tailors became associated with higher-end clothing during this period. In London, this status grew out of the dandy trend in the early 19th century when new tailor shops were established around Saville Row. These shops acquired a reputation for sewing high-quality handmade clothing in the style of the latest British fashions, as well as more classic styles. The boutique culture of Carnaby Street was absorbed by Seville Row tailors during the late 20th century, ensuring the continued flourishing of Seville Row's businesses. So, 20th century and today. Sewing underwent further developments during the 20th century as sewing machines became more affordable to working class demand for sewing patterns grew. Women had become accustomed to seeing the latest fashions in periodicals during the late 19th and early 20th centuries, increasing demand for sewing patterns yet more. American tailor and manufacturer Ebenezer Butter Butterwick. Oh, I know him! I know him. I mean, I don't personally know him because he's dead, but um, Butterwick was, is some of my favorite patterns. He met the demand with paper patterns. You cut paper at home and you make patterns. If you don't know how to sew, you have to use a pattern. He made the paper patterns. They could be traced and used by home sewers. The patterns sold in small packets and became wildly popular. 
Several pattern companies soon established themselves. Women's magazines also carried sewing patterns. Yes, like um, Vogue yeah, had um, sewing patterns and uh, who else did? A lot of people, a lot of magazines did. Women's magazines also carried sewing patterns and continued to do so for much of the 20th century. This practice declined during the last decades of the 20th century when ready-made clothing became a necessity as women joined the paid workforce in larger numbers, leaving them with less time to sew. If indeed they had an interest. Today, the low price of ready-made clothing in shops means that home sewing is confined largely to hobbyists in Western countries like me. I sew. I am a, a hobbyist in a Western country. The spread of sewing machine technology to industrialized economies around the world meant the spread of Western style sewing methods and clothing styles as well. In Japan, traditional clothing was sewn together with loose chain stitches that were removed so that the clothing could be taken apart and the assorted pieces laundered separately. Wow. The tight locked stitches made by home sewing machines and the use of Western clothing patterns led to a movement towards wearing Western style clothing during the early 20th century. Western sewing and clothing styles were disseminated in sub-Saharan Africa by Christian missionaries from the 1830s onward. Indigenous cultures such as the Zulu and Tswana <laughs> were indoctrinated in the Western way of dress as a sign of conversion to Christianity. First, Western hand sewing techniques and later machine sewing spread throughout the regions where the European colonists settled. However, a recent examination of new online learning methods demonstrated that technology can be adapted to share knowledge of a culture's traditional sewing methods. Using self-paced online tutorials, a melee sewing class learned how to tailor and sew a traditional men's baju karung garment in three days. <laughs> Whereas a traditional melee sewing class would have taken five days to teach the same information. You go, melees. Advances in industrial technology, such as the development of synthetic fibers during the early 20th century, have brought profound changes to the textile industry as a whole. Textile industries in Western countries have declined sharply as textile companies compete for cheaper labor in other parts of the world. It's not good. According to the U.S. Department of Labor, employment of sewers and tailors is expected to experience little or no change, growing 1% from 2010 to 2020. It is estimated that every lost textile job in a Western country in recent years has resulted in 1.5 jobs being created in an outsourced country such as China. Textile workers who perform tasks with sewing machines or do detailed work by hand are still a vital component of the industry. However, small-scale sewing is also an economic standby in many developing countries where both people, male and female, are self-employed sewers. <laughs> self-employed sewers. Garment construction. Main article, pattern sewing. Before sewing together an article of clothing, a pattern is generally followed to construct the garment. A pattern can be quite simple. Some patterns are more than a mathematical formula that the sewer calculates based on the intended wearer's measurements. Once calculated, the sewer has the measurements needed to cut the cloth and sew the garment together. At the other end of the spectrum are haute couture fashion designs. When a couture garment is made of an unusual material or has extreme proportion, the design may challenge the sewer's engineering knowledge. Complex designs are drafted and refitted dozens of times and may take around 40 hours to develop a final pattern and require 60 hours of cutting and sewing. Most clothing today is mass produced and conforms to standard sizing based on body measurements that are intended to fit the greatest proportion of the population. However, while standard sizing is generally a useful guideline, it is little more than that because there is no industry standard that is both widely accepted 
and strictly adhered to in all markets. So, we're all depending on the garment. So, okay. Elements of garment sewing, main article. Stitch, textile arts, and seam sewing. Sewers. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Sewers working on a simple pattern need only a few sewing tools. Measuring tape, needle, thread, cloth, and sewing shears. So important, don't ever use these on anything other than material. More complex patterns done on a sewing machine may only need a few simple tools to get the job done. But there are an ever-growing variety of helpful sewing aids available, such as a presser foot attachment for sewing ruffles or hem repair glue. When the sewer has gathered the necessary tools to tackle a pattern, there are several elements of garment construction that are part of the process. Patterns will specify where to cut on the grain or the bias cut. Construction stitches include edge stitching, under stitching, stay stitching, top stitching. Seam types include the plain seam, the zigzag seam, flat fell seam, French seam, and many others. Supporting materials such as interfacing, interlining, or lining, or fusing may be used as well to give the fabric a more rigid, durable shape. Volume can be added with elements such as pleats or reduced with the use of darts. Sewing machines are now made for a broad range of specialized sewing purposes, such as quilting machines, computerized machines for embroidery, and various sergers for finishing raw edges of fabric. I have a serger. I also have a cross stitch machine. Just saying. <laughs> Clothing technology. Clothing technology has evolved to a complicated science weighed against the labor cost making positive and negative effects across the globe. Millions of women in Bangladesh and other developing countries have come out of poverty working as sewing machine operators. Construction of digital garments with the development of cloth stimulation software such as CLO3D, Marvelous Designer, and Optitex. Seamstresses can now draft patterns on the computer and visualize clothing designs by using the pattern creation tools and virtual sewing machines within these cloth simulation programs. See also embroidery stitch, glossary of sewing terminology, glossary of textile manufacturing, list of sewing occupations, list of sewing stitches, needlework, notions, pattern, sewing machine. References, Anna Walt Patricia Reef, 2007, The Worldwide History of Dress. Thames and Hudson, ISBN 978050051363-7. Barber Elizabeth Wayland, 1994, Women's Work, The First 20,000 Year. We have been working a very long time. W. W. Norton. Huxley, Susan, 1999, Sewing Secrets from the Fashion Industry. Proven methods to help you sew like the pros. New York, Roddale Publishing, ISBN 9780875969800. Mayrick Elisa, 2006. Rip it! How to deconstruct and reconstruct the clothes of your dreams. That is the title of an article or a book. New York, Fireside, ISBN 9780743268998. Eight six seven five three zero oh, nine. Mayrick Elisa again. Mayrick Elisa, you are a sewing expert, Elisa. Two thousand two. So fast, so easy. All you need to know when you start to sew. <laughs> Clever, Elisa. Clever. New York Saint Martin's Griffin. ISBN zero three one two six two six nine zero nine nine. Reader's Digest. Oh, remember Reader's Digest? 1976. Complete Guide to Sewing. The Reader's Digest Association, Inc. ISBN 0895770261. Pick and Mary. That's her name. Brooks, 1957. The Fashion Dictionary. Funk and Wagnall's Singer. The New Sewing Essentials by the Editors of Creative Publishing. International ISBN 0865733082. 2 
And that was the entire Wikipedia page for the history of sewing. I'm Eva Longoria, and this is a pillow.